I already recorded this video. It was just about 10 minutes long. And then I realized I never pressed record on my desktop computer. It's recording now. Today is a demonstration video. I'm going to do some advanced things. I'm not going to go into detail. A lot of what I've talked about, I've gone over in previous videos. But this is a demonstration to not be afraid, especially if you have uh, older devices you can mess with. And I, I highly recommend not doing this with your main device, unless you're very comfortable doing it. There's no reason to do what we're going to do today. We're going to purposely mess up our device. But if you have older devices just lying around, they are great to mess with. And the more you, you mess up a device and fix it, the more comfortable you're gonna be in modifying your devices. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna purposely go into a device, my, my uh, Android phone here, and we're gonna go into Twerp, custom recovery, and we are going to mess up the partition so that it won't boot. And then we're going to reinstall the stock ROM. In fact, uh, again, this video is going to be a little different. I'm going to be moving the camera around so you can see everything that's going on. Uh, I just flashed the stock ROM back onto my device. So it's like a brand new device. I haven't even logged in yet. Let's have a look at that real quick. So again, I haven't even finished logging into the device. So I'm just going to hold down the power button and then click restart. And while it's restarting on a Motorola device, I'm going to hold down the volume down button until I get into fast boot bootloader. There we go. I am at the bootloader screen. And so what are we gonna do? Well, I am gonna take an application. It, let me also say, it is very, very hard to permanently brick a device. If you know what you're doing, you can soft brick it and it's very easy to fix. So let's look at this. We need a something, I'm gonna mess with the partition, so I need an application to do this on the desktop. Lots of times you would use something like uh, FDisk. Well, you're not gonna have that uh, by default on a system. There's another program called Parted. So here you can see up on the screen, I have uh, uploaded a copy of that that I found online. I did not compile it myself um, to archive.org. There'll be links in the description of this video to all the notes and links where you can get stuff. I already have that downloaded here in my directory. So if I was to file parted, you will see that it is an ELF 64 bit for an ARM architecture. It is statically linked, meaning it needs no external libraries. And uh, all I need to do is push that to my phone. So first thing I need to do is um, load up twerp. So I'm going to get a twerp image. I already have a twerp image. Twerp is not a command that's probably on your machine. Um, twerp, I have images for each of my uh, Android devices in a folder, and my command twerp just lists them for me so I can choose it. My phone here is the Motorola G uh, Power or Power G 2021. It's Borneo. So each phone has a code name. It's very annoying how uh, these manufacturers have 10 different phones, all with almost exactly the same name, but they all have individual code names. The way you find out the code name, besides trying to Google it, is uh, when you have ADB installed and you ADB in, the prompt will tell you the name. And again, this, this is a 2021 phone and it has its code name is Borneo. So I found an unofficial ROM for it, which brings me to another point. Uh, you notice when this starts up, look at this. Touch screen's not working. I've been using this, this image for over a year now, and I still see in um, forums online people saying that it doesn't work because the touch screen doesn't work. Well, guess what it does? You just need to wait a little bit. I don't know why. The phone boots. If you just wait 20 or 30 seconds, the touch screen will start working, right? Let's see. There you go. It's working now. So I, I don't know why it takes so long, but it does work. It just takes a little while. Anyway, back to the computer here. Let me ADB in, make sure ADB is working. And as you can see, the prompt here says Borneo, even when we're in twerp. But even if you're not in twerp, if you're just in Android and you and you go into the shell, it will tell you the code name. Uh, so I have twerp. So let's go ahead and I'm going to push the, the parted application to the phone. So I'm going to say push parted, I'm sorry, ADB push parted to, and we'll put that in SBIN. Once it's uh, put there, we can now ADB shell into the phone. We will go into S bin and we'll change mod and just give it all permission so it's executable parted. Probably don't need to do 777, but it doesn't matter because this is a uh, temporary partition because uh, I just booted it, I didn't install it. And uh, now that that's going, that application will work. If we move into dev and we go to block devices, we can list out our block devices, basically our hard drives here. And my main hard drive is going to be the MMC block zero. And then it has all these partitions, lots of partitions. It has a super partition, which has sub partitions, and then it has A, B for each of them. How do you know which one's which, just out of curiosity? Well, you could just list, uh, if we do in the uh, dev block and then by name, you'll see it lists 
the name for each partition. And if we add the dash L for listing the list or a long list, I don't know, it will say, okay, so uh, VB meta A is actually pointing to partition 61. Uh, VB meta B is partition 62. Uh, my system, meta system A is here. And so you know which, which one is which. Let's go ahead and use the parted command though. We use parted and we will give it dev block MMC zero. Again, we don't want to go to a partition. We want to go to the to the full drive. So no partition, no P number. And now that we have that, we can say P free. And it's going to list all the partitions, their, where they're located, how big they are. You want to back up this text. I haven't had to, but it's, in, it's good to have a copy of it in case you mess it up more than we're going to mess it up. Uh, you can manually fix it if you have all these numbers, although you shouldn't have to do that because there's images out there to fix it, but it doesn't hurt. It's a little piece of text. Just copy, copy all this and put it in a text file somewhere because you see there's a lot of them because there's a lot of partitions. But let's go ahead and just delete two partitions. Let's delete uh, this VB meta system A and B. Probably just have to delete one of them. But if we do RM63, RM64, I can then do Q to get out of parted. And if I was to reboot my device now and go back to my camera view here, you're probably not even gonna see this. It's very hard to see. There is red text on the on the device, uh, which basically says it says uh, no valid operating system could be found. Device will not boot. Blah blah blah. That that would be very scary if you haven't done this before. So what are we going to do? Well, let's go ahead and hold down power until that screen turns off, and hold down the down volume button as well. So power and volume down on a Motorola device. Once it restarts, you can let go of power, keep holding down the down volume. And look, I'm back at fast boot. It's still messed up. It doesn't, it says start there where before start was over here and it had uh, a colored background, like it was in a bubble. And I think it had an Android image somewhere. So it's, it's messed up here, but as long as you can get fast boot started, you can you can fix pretty much any issue. Now fast boot, uh, your, your bootloader is on a partition somewhere. Uh, and if you screw that up, I don't know, I, but you would have to really be trying to mess that up. So now that we've done that, uh, what we need is an image that we know that works. So you should make sure you have that before you start messing with your device. Um, I have a stock image. So again, for my Motorola device, and I've gone over this uh, in videos past, there's a website called uh, mirrors.lolinet.com. Again, we'll notes to all this in the description of this video. And they keep track of uh, firmware for different devices. If I go to firmware here, you can see they have Lenovo, a few other NEC. Um, let's go ahead and go to Motorola. Again, we know that mine is a Borneo, so I can go down here until I see Borneo. Uh, now, a blank flash, I've talked about that in a previous video. If you really, you mess up your partitions badly, this will actually fix the partitions. You basically do what we're about to do, but we don't even need to do that with what I've done. We'll go to official uh, and you, depending on where you got your phone, there's different firmware. They keep pretty up to date on it. I got my phone from Google Fi, so we'll go to Fi. And it is currently, uh, when I'm recording this, uh, December of 2022. And you can see just, you know, two, three months ago, uh, an update went out and they have it here. It's a zip file, download and unzip that. I've already done that. I'm in this directory here. And if I cut out flash uh, file.exe, the file, sometimes you get the stockware image and they have a shell script uh, already set up for you that you can just run. Uh, but it, if not, it will have some sort of text file most likely telling you what partitions are what. So if I cat this out, we can see here uh, that there's, it has a list of all the files and what we're doing. So basically they're all flash. So we're saying this file, GPT bin, flash, where we're we gonna flash it to partition. Uh, the bootloader image is gonna be flashed to the bootloader partition. For the most part, the image name is going to be the partition name, but that's not always true. If we look here, we have a partition called Bluetooth, but the file is called BTFM, all capital. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go into this detail, but basically you're gonna use fast boot, flash, in, uh, what partition, and the image. I uh, have already taken all the information from this XML file, and I have put it into separate commands. So let's clear the screen, I'll paste this here. So here we go, I can just click this and run it, and it's gonna start flashing all of those images one at a time, okay? Uh, this is gonna take probably about five minutes, 
So I'm going to pause the video and then we'll come back. Okay, uh, it is done. Again, it only took about five minutes or so. Uh, there's one more command. That we can, if I try to reboot right now, it's probably going to give me an error and then ask if I want a factory reset. And I can just click yes. Or before we do the factory reset, or before we restart, uh, I'm, I think that we can just do uh, fast boot dash W, which will wipe information on there. And then we can do uh, fast boot reboot. And let's go ahead and watch the phone. So far, so good. Getting the message that our bootloader is unlocked, which it has been unlocked for about a year now. Oh, good. We're getting the Motorola screen. And hopefully we'll get the little animation here in a moment. Uh, and it doesn't just restart. If so, then it will probably bring us back to that fast boot screen where we can say factory reset. But I'm pretty sure our little uh, fast boot dot dash W will wipe that and do a, it's basically doing a factory reset, wiping all the information off there. Uh, but that, that's pretty much it. I wanted to show you this. Again, you do this a couple of times and you can be fearless uh, with messing with your device. As long as you have your personal files backed up, you can do, oh, there you go, we're getting the animation. So we're back to stock ROM, even though we wiped out some of the important partitions. Uh, yeah. That's, that's basically all I wanted to show. I'll let it continue booting here just so you can see it'll bring us to the, uh, the welcome hello screen. Um, but especially if you have an old device lying around, unlock the bootloader if it's a device you can and start messing with it. Go and see what you could do. See how you can mess it up. See how you can fix it. Uh, it used to be nerve wracking when I would do this because lots of times I would break it and I, I knew, uh, there we go. Hi there. Okay. I knew, I knew that um, I could fix it, but sometimes I wasn't sure how. And, uh, and especially if it's your main device, if you don't know how, it's like trying to figure it out. You're like, I need my phone and, and, and it hasn't been working for two hours while I've been messing with it. But if you know how to do this, you know, you do it on, on your um, extra devices, you can... Uh, do it on your device again in five minutes i can always get it up and running now this is stock rom which means once it's booted it's going to take another 10 minutes for it to go through all the information uh do you want to you know log into your google account are you sure you want to, don't want to log into, your, log into your google account clone things over set up and the setup takes forever if you do like lineage os it boots you click a couple of screens and you're loaded, which is which is another reason not to use stock ROMs. But to have the stock ROM so you can always go back to it in case there's an issue with some other image you're using, that's great. Again, uh, this is uh, there's links in the description to the notes to where you can download parted. If not, just Google Android parted binary and you should be able to find it. Uh, and if not, it, it, I bet you could probably go into Termux. If it's not already installed, install it, and then just grab that single binary because I bet it's still uh, statically linked so that it doesn't have to uh, depend on any libraries. That's it. Uh, and again, the whole point of this video is just to show you I have to really try to mess up the partitions, and it still was easy to fix. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't fear your device. Only buy devices that allow you to unlock the bootloader, and that will help support companies that at least give you a little bit of freedom. I'm not saying that like, I love Motorola, they're the best company ever, but the fact that they let me unlock it is great. And I wouldn't buy, I have one Sam, we have two Samsung tablets that I bought 12 years ago. I really liked the devices and I was able to unlock the bootloader, but through tr trickery and tricks that people found online because Samsung doesn't allow you to unlock the bootloader. And I, I wouldn't buy a device that doesn't allow you to unlock the bootloader uh, unless it's like almost free and I'm using it as a test device. But my main device definitely need to be able to unlock it to customize it. Anyway, films by Chris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.